The Order has been purged from London. For now, they hold no power there. That is good news. And I would celebrate, but for the fact that Jorvik now suffers from the same infestation. Jorvik is a city under Norse control. I should have less problem finding allies here. That is a hopeful way of seeing it. Speak to Ranvi when you wish to travel there. I have something here for you. Tidings that may displease you. Tell me. You remember Kjotve's son, Gorm? He has since taken his father's place in the Order. Interesting. Is Gorm here in England? Is he another blotch on our list? He is one of our targets, yes. But he is not in England. He is further west, in fact. A land called Vinland, discovered centuries ago by an Irish sailor called Brendan. The Order of the Ancients has some recent fascination with Vinland, but I cannot say what it might be. Let me find out for you, after I silence Gorm. Vinland is far away, according to my source. It may take weeks to find him after a long and perilous journey. There is no danger that would cow me, Hytham. I'll speak with Ranvi and arrange passage. Was there something else? I have to go. Then go in peace. Come to me. Should we take this to your chamber? Hmm. No need. I want to see the Alliance map. Have you spoke with Hytham about Vinland? I have. Good. I have marked it on the map with a bit of guesswork as to its location. Let me know when you wish to leave. Tell me more about Kent. Basim has written, claiming to have found the woman Fulke and asking for your aid. He has taken shelter at St. Hadrian's Priory. Any news of Sigurd? Nothing he mentioned. But if he has found the paladin Fulke, Sigurd cannot be far behind. I will go as soon as I can. Good. Be safe, Favor. Basim has news of Sigurd. I should find him soon. Dag, Basim has brought word of Sigurd's location. We're leaving at once to find him. Well done, Eivor. After so long, it finally occurs to you to search for our Jarl. I applaud your half-hearted effort, but I will not be joining you. Dag, this is no joke. On the ship, now. Someone needs to stay home and direct the affairs of the settlement. As you seem to shun this place as often as possible, it must fall to me. Sigurd's life is at stake. We need you there. No, I am needed here. Do you doubt me so completely that you will not raise an axe to save your Jarl? A fine way of putting it, Wolf Kissed. But go, find the Jarl, bring him back. Only do not get lost along the way, as you seem to more and more these days. This is not done, Dag. We will speak when I return. Did not Augustine make a distinction between faith and understanding? <laughs> that is my point. What I mean to say is, faith is paramount. Yes, for without it, Christ's sacrifice means nothing. He died to save us, did he not? From the original sin of Adam and Eve? Yet evil persists. 
Yes, evil persists, because he gave us free will. Does a newborn babe, slain by a despot, have free will? Yes. Uh, no, I mean... That is too simplistic. Or the priest, whose heart is torn from his chest by the wolf? Judas, who was predestined to betray the Nazarene? Uh, some argue Judas was used. Do my ears deceive me, Brother Hortbert? You question the scriptures? Declare Judas an innocent? A preposterous blasphemy! No, no, uh, that is not what I said. <laughs> Brother Cedric, am I not the most pious of his servants? Out! Out! Making new friends? A person's tongue gives you a taste of their heart, Eivor. And such information is often useful. And how do these sallow Christians taste? It was only a figure of speech, Eivor. And I have tired of it already. Is this how it must be between us? Of course not. I'm grateful that you have come. What happened in Mercia still puzzles me. Fulkis saw something in Sigurd. A power. A legacy. What is it she wants? Her motives are difficult to fathom, but that can come later. Let's find your brother first. Agreed. If we do this, you'll earn the right to call me friend, ten thousand fold. So, what is your plan? We are deep in their god's heartland. A heathen and a heretic. To hunt Fulke, we'll need a Christian snare. Fulke is hardly a saint herself. These Christians abhor her strange ideas. True. But unlike us, she can carry herself as one of them. She won't hide from everyone. Not with a prisoner in tow. So, where to begin? I've made a friend, Abbot Cunibert, full of pious fire, but with ambition that far outweighs his wit. And what does your friend Cunibert know? Come, I will introduce you, and we'll hear the full tale together. Have you found some peace in your time alone, Basim? I am always at peace, and never alone. I move among the people of the world with great joy. I watch them, study them, learn from them at all times. This is our duty, the Hidden One's calling. You know, for the first time since we met, you sound more like your apprentice than yourself. <laughs> Surely Hytham sounds like me, if I have taught him well. Your creed and your tenets, you mean? That's right. And our sense of, how should I say, deep responsibility to the betterment of mankind. That's quite an ambition, but it doesn't explain what you see in Sigurd. My brother is not so generous. Ah, but your brother is someone special, important, and I want him to see that. I hope to show it to him. <laughs> Is this not a blessed plot? God's own country. And this Eden should be given to his servants to tend. Abbot Cunibert, this is the Norse I spoke of. Ah, oh, yes. And quite a fearsome one at that. Basim says you know the paladin Fulke. Indeed. The Lady Fulke passed this way not more than a month ago. We talked, we drank. Very pleasant woman. And where is she? Eivor will be your axe, Abbot. Whether to fell a tree, or hew the limbs from an enemy. What have you promised him? Oh, just a trifle, Eivor. A little problem I believe you can help me with. Speak your terms plainly, Abbot. I will decide if the bargain is worth my time. Ah! Your wolf shows its teeth, Basim. Let's cut to the point. What favor would you ask in exchange for Fulke? Some weeks ago, our elderman in Kent was called to God. A terrible loss. King Alfred has chosen his replacement, but has not yet announced the name. I must know it. Now. All of Kent will see soon enough which thane he has chosen. Why not wait? I want early access. To woo him. Before his exalted position is made public, and every fool is at his door. Who else knows the chosen man? The king's emissary. 
sent with a letter of congratulations to the new Elderman. Intercept him and bring me the news. When I know the Thane's name, we'll discuss how I might win his favor. Why not kill him in secret and petition Alfred for the seat? As a man of God, I cannot. Besides, he who stands behind the throne can better pull on the puppet's threads. This emissary, how will I find him? Tunbridge Monastery sent word that the King's men always pass a few nights in their hospitality. Begin there. I'll get the Elderman's name. You'll find Fulke. All in good time. Now, if we're done, I have business up the south coast. Falkenstone has the best fish in Wessex. Then I will find you there, when the Elderman's name is mine. Cunibert is ambitious, but well-connected. We will not find Fulke without him. I suppose we'll see. What will you do? I'm not done playing with these Christians yet. I will see you in Falkenstein. <clears throat> if Alfred's emissaries spend a few days here, someone may know where he went. I'm in no mood for wind belching, so choose your words well. The King's emissary. I need to know where he went after he stayed here. And I need to know why I've started getting boils under my armpits. Time will tell, eh? Alfred's emissary. Where? Him and the Bard ended up in a copse by the bridge doing Lord knows what. Sounded like they were murdering a cat. Singing? If you say so. If Alfred's emissaries spend a few days here, someone may know where he went. Are you sober enough to answer me? You have fine hair. It shimmers like woven silk. I don't have time for flattery. I seek Alfred's emissary. The only man of Alfred's I know is Orvin the Legless. And he is? <laughs> Haven't seen him in years. Probably dead drunk, or just dead in a ditch. Why do you think they called him Legless? Because he has no legs? <laughs> He's a figure of speech, Lord in heaven. Did she speak to you and betray his scripture? I'm troubled in the spirit. It is heresy to even think of it. Forget her. I'm busy. Leave me be. You trying to catch flies, or would you ask something of me? I'm looking for a man. He passed through here on the King's business. Oh, bugger off, eh? Or I'll call the guards. I'm sick of people. You need to heal your own ills. How about you help me from the goodness of your heart, and then I'll leave you alone? A wise move, Mudwit. It so happens I did see Alfred's man. He's long gone, though. Maybe Gowan the Bard knows where. Where will I find him? Well, he was pissed as a newt. Last I saw, he was passed out in trees between the arbor and bridge. Oh, now go find someone else to vex. There was a bard drinking with the emissary. I should find him, see if he knows anything. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Someone stole my trues. You there. You alive. <laughs> Patience is a tired horse. Plod -de -plod -plod. Another tottering teat sucker who can't hold his drink. Let's clear your head.
A good dunk in the river, or slap in the face should return his wits. in here? Oh, God's truce! Fire on you! Oh, what infernal wakes me? Are you the tail weaver? Gowan the dandelion. For the seeds of my stories flit upon the winds of Wessex. But why, Mule, do you kick my noggin? You and Alfred's emissary were drinking in the tavern. Tell me where he went. Were we? I was so ale-addled. Perhaps a small and silver thing upon my palm might help me recall? No one would drown themselves in weeping with one less bard in the world. Tell me what you know. You Danes aren't much for bargaining, are you? He was heading for the white coast to the southeast. Dover Fortress. My thanks, and in return, wisdom. Too much beer piping will grow a fool in wit and words. My thanks, weaver of the obvious. Now leave me to my unholy punishment. Getting tired. I'll ring the bell. Watch my lead.
If I could steal the letter without killing the emissary, it would keep me out of trouble. Out of options, Doc. Yeah. Alfred's chosen elderman is a thing called Tetmund. The abbot Kinnebert will want to know. I should meet Bassem and the abbot in Fulkenston. Eivor, you have news? Kent's new elderman will be Thane Tedmund. Tedmund? Oh, the Lord is testing me. He is made mouse by you Danes. Barely leaves his fortress at Rusister. How might I gain his influence if he will not speak to me? Or to anyone? It is a puzzle. To inspire loyalty, Tedmund must owe you something. Such as his life. Go on. A fortress stormed. A man kidnapped. If you beat back his enemy, saved him from sure death, his gratitude would be... Swell. It would know no bounds. But that fortress will be harder to pry open than a nun's knees. Perhaps. Perhaps not. Are you hiding something, Bassam? There is a lumber mill nearby, correct? Bemisfield. Alfred invests much in fortifying Wessex, and uses our forests to do so. The mill provides his wood. Tedmund is there. Impossible! How do you know? I heard rumors that Tedmund had been lured out of self-exile to manage work on the fortifications of Canterbury. Taking him from a lumberyard is less dangerous than assaulting a fortress. But your rescue attempt will not have the same flair. Is it worth it? It may still work. Yes. Yes. Bring him to the Megaliths. And Fulke? When I have Tedman's fealty, you shall have Fulke. Now go. I will rustle up a small rescue party. I do a roaring trade at Reculver and Tunbridge. They pay well for my catch. The monks? Do those parchment-skinned Christians ever eat meat? Don't you believe in Jesus? Rest they from rattling skulls. Rattle these bones <laughs> instead. <gasps> I'm wary of this abbot, Bassam. He is self-serving and evasive. Can he really deliver Fulke? The abbot is a friend of Fulke's. That is clear. So long as he doesn't suspect our motive, we may have a chance. Indeed. This brings to mind a story. Perhaps you've heard of it. The Scorpion and the Frog. A children's story? A cautionary tale. The Scorpion wants to cross the river, but he cannot swim. So he enlists the help of the Frog. The Frog... The Frog agrees to carry him on his back extracting a promise that the Scorpion will not sting him. Let me guess, the Scorpion reneges, blaming his nature, and both drown. The Scorpion crosses the river and stings an innocent man, killing him. So what does this tale tell us? That your stories are clouded, and their meaning doubly so? It shows that every tale has a thousand possible outcomes, many of which are surprising. If the Abbot does not deliver Folke, he will die at my hand. And we will continue our search. A sobering approach. Hey. Hey, who are it's you? It's rare to see Abbot Kim. Slashed and disemboweled by sharp weapons. Saxon blade from the look of it. The rich one, the monastery of Bruce Ale. 
He keeps half the men from the council from their wives. With an ale soused wastrel, is <laughs> taken a husband. If you're waiting for a sober one, you're done. No, take her now. I'll poke you. <laughs> You've been avenged, my friend. My boots are dirty, or my hair needs combing. I will split it. Sunan, guide me. Where? Keep it too far, any? I hope this chase will catch us a plump hen. Once the abbot has Tedman's gratitude, he will deliver folk here. It will cost us nothing more than this. If that leaden wit keeps his word. Ah, you prefer to work in the shadows. I need your eyes, my friend. should not be seen in this area.
Stop caterwauling and you'll live. Live? Oh, saints protect me! Silence will save you, Tidmund. Silence, not your saints. <laughs> Flee, my friend. We have the man we came for. Does this venture not set your blood ablaze? You don't prefer working in the shadows. And so we have. To steal a man, take him with swiftness, and escape without anyone on our heels. We hide in plain sight. Such is our way. But only until the moment of success. The final strike. I prefer to act and speak plain. Kings and lords who do not are often misunderstood. Yet, as a leader yourself, you cannot deny that subtlety and intrigue are a cloak you must wear. How many of your clan know the true circumstances? Halt, Danes! In the name of Alfred, King of Wessex, I demand you release his royal subject <gasps> into my care. Come no closer, Christian! Else your man dies by my blade. Please, I, I'm not the man you want. Keep your eye on this one. He'll be worth a hefty bounty. Any false moves and I will snip your heels. We have your man. Now let's finish this shadow play and be gone. Are you sure that's Tedmund? He's dressed as a lord, but that man is shorter and fatter than I recall. I'm not Tedmund. I, 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 I'm not. I, I swear upon the holy rood. I, I am not Thane Tedmund. What in heaven's name is happening here? Who are you? Speak quickly or I'll slit your throat and leave you for the crows. Shergar. I am called Shergar. Lord Tedmund pays me a measly coin to serve as his double. Brother Shergar? You are far from Augustine's priory. Uh... I left the cloisters many moons ago, Your Holiness. The monastic life was not my calling. We can use you yet, Shagar. Summon Tedman to a meeting. Get him out in the open. Tedman has no care for me or what I have to say. My orders come by letter, never by mouth. I hardly know the man. You're of no use to us, then. Perhaps I should just kill you, here or now. No, no, wait, 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 wait. wait. Let, let, let me think, let me think. Huh? Danes! To, to storm the walls, you need Danes. Th there's a raiding camp west of here I was told to be wary of. I acting as Tedmund, I, I ordered a band of soldiers to capture them. If you hurry, you may be able to stop this. If another band of Danes wants to join our assault, we'll have the distraction we need to get inside Roosister. If the Saxons don't slaughter them first... I, I am still Tedmund to the men in the field. I could speak with their captain, send his men away. It's a fearless plan. The Nornia knit winding paths that cannot be unknotted. It seems Ruth's sister was always in our path. Abbot, stay alert. We will send word when we're ready to capture Tedmund. And this fool? He knows much of our plan. He'll come with us, and if he betrays me, I will roast his balls over a roaring fire. You will not regret this. My wily ways and quick wit will cease the need for bloodshed. I still might kill you yet, man, if your prattling doesn't cease. The rewards for being Tedmund are rapidly diminishing. And how does one become a double? Are there vigorous challenges and tests to overcome? I was born with the misfortune of looking like someone else. I should have stayed on... Let us approach the captain with caution. He drinks too much and does not need a reason to kill us.
stay in Tedmund. What are you doing here? How dare you address me in such a defiant manner? Do you not know who I am? You are Tedmund, as I've said. And I mean no disrespect, Lord, but I was told you were back in Rue, sister. Oh, yes. And, 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 and do I... Do, do I look like I'm in Rue, sister? You, uh, do not, sir. A wise man is always unexpected. You travel in strange company, Lord. An Arab and a Dane. I'm here to advise your Thane in the ways of my people. That, that is correct. A cultural exchange of sorts. Perhaps one day I will visit your... Uh, D Dane... Daneland. Norway. You mistake me for a foreigner, but are we not all just a measure of the places we have seen? Right. Well, uh, that aside, uh, have you any further orders, Lord? Yes, yes. I order, I, I order you to stop loitering and return to your barracks, you scabwit. And what of the captured Danes? You must kill them all! Every last... Sorry, no. Uh, leave them here, tied up, as a, as a feast for wolves and crows. That is all. You may depart. Shoo! A convincing ruse that has earned you your freedom. Go, and make your life anew, not in another man's boots. I will. This small sup of power has got me thinking. Perhaps I could be a l leader of men. Yes, yes! Hurry along, men! Warm thighs and ale awaits! Come on, you laggard! Tied up like animals. I need to free them. We owe you our lives, friend. These Saxon horse sons would have killed us all. Yes, they would have. And now's your chance to hit back. March with us on Rochester, and drain it of riches. I would gladly, friend. But we few will not break those iron-thick walls. And we have no allies in Wessex. None who could be called upon to attack their countrymen. Mercia will heed the call. Giedrich will provide our viking at Hort. We'll send a message to Oxenfordshire. The men of Mercia would gladly take a swipe at Wessex. What is your name, warrior? Runa Egelstotter. We need ships, Runa. We have a small fleet moored upriver. But a naval chain blocks passage to Rue Sister's walls. I'll remove it, and your people will bring their ships. Now, gather these fallen weapons and armor. Giedrich and the men of Oxenfordshire will need them to hide their Mercian origins. My warriors were denied Valhalla today. I cannot bear the idea of gifting their weapons to more Saxons. Their sacrifice was great. Their gift will be all the greater. And they will know justice with our victory. It will calm their restless shades, I promise. Will your men bring the armor to the battle? And what is our plan? In the morning you will go to Buckingham, remind Giedrich of his promise. When you have his bond, meet me on the shore near Roosester, with the ships. Ah, uh, but Cunibert must be warned in advance. He'll need time to muster his rescue party. Runa, that is your task. I'll tell you where to meet him before you leave. All seems in order. At first new light, I will leave. Good. That gives us time to drink. You've traveled so far... ...to carry out your duty. Is this the life of a... Uh, ...hidden one? Always on the move? No. Mine is not the usual path. The creed does travel. Our ideals are universal. We believe that. So there's nowhere you call home? No place I call home. No. Weird. <laughs> For me, home is family. But I have no family. No one? Not even Hytham? Parents, brothers, all dead. I lost my parents when I was nine winters along. Without Sigurd, I would have. 
I would have. There is always one unbreakable bond. Yes. Children. <laughs> they bewilder you. They can cause you so much worry. Fill you with joy. Even stop your heart. And if you're lucky, they replace you. I was not so lucky. I had a son. I miss him terribly. Even now. I am sorry, Bassam. He was taken from me. By someone I trusted. A friend, a mentor. A man who I would trust with anything. But a man you trust with anything can take everything. I had. <laughs> 